Have you ever wanted to go back in time? And if you could go back in time for just one day, where would you go? I think that I would go back to the Vikings. I mean, why not go all in and be Ragnar Lodbrok for just one day? Today I am going to take you with me through the history of time, because we are going to take a look at Trekking Through History from Underdog Games. This is a 2 to 4 player game and it's around 30 to 60 minutes of gameplay. I am going to show you the setup of the game, I'm going to give you an overview of the gameplay and go through the different rules. So when you have watched this video, well you are ready to go out on a trip through time. This here is the setup of the board. In the middle you have the little gaming map here for all players to easy reach. Up here you have the container with all the tokens. In this game you got something that is called a day deck. There are three different decks starting with day one, two and then three. You should start by shuffling day one and put it on the deck spot. Then you need to take the top five cards and put it out on the market. Then we also have some Ancestry cards. They should be placed on the Ancestry spot. Depending on how many players you are, you need a different amount of cards. This is a two player game, so we have six Ancestry cards. And they should also be placed face up, just as the day cards. Then each player needs to take their little player board. This is called an Initarium, looking like this. Each player now randomly takes four Itinerary cards. Then the players need to choose a player color and take a watch of their corresponding color, put them above each other and on spot 12 on the watch. They also need to take a wooden token in the same color as their player color and put them as well on top of each other just as we did on the watch, but this time we put them on zero on the score track. Then each player takes a crystal tank matching their player color, and one time crystal to put in their tank. In this game, the travel industry have reached a whole nother level. Now we don't just go to a new country, no, we go to a new country in a different time. We will be picking a time that we would like to visit in the departure row. Each player will then take that card, get some benefits and then put the card in front of them in something that is called their trek. The turn order in this game does not go back and forward between the different players. No, we need to keep an eye on the watch. Whoever is on the top of the other player's watches or furthest behind on the watch track is the player that gets to do their turn. Meaning that one player might do two or three turns in a row depending on which cards they choose in the departure row. So the first thing a player needs to do is to pick a card. But which one should they pick and why? The players can choose any face up card that they would like to from the departure row. At the top of the cards we can see where we are going. And then we have a number. This number represents the year that this is happening. The BCE stands for Before Common Era, meaning that they go way, way back. And the cards that do not have those letters happens after the ones with the BCE. Down here we can see a number. This number represents how many moves you need to do on the watch if you pick this card. And then we have some symbols. The symbol represents the benefits that you will get. So if the player chooses this card here, for example, they have now started to build their trek with the 41 BCE as their starting card in that trek. As we can see down here, we should move our pocket watch four steps on the big watch. And then we also get the benefits. Starting with this one right here, we get one token matching the symbol on the card. These tokens goes out on your player board, starting from the top and going down. As you can see you have symbols matching all of the different tokens that you can get from the cards. When you have managed to fill any of the rows, you will get the benefits out on the sides. 
meaning that when you have managed to fill this one up, you will get 8 points. Down here you would get 10 points, but you will get 4 points just by covering this one up. On the symbol here, you would get some gems. And the same thing here. You will get one token to put on your player board, and then two gems to put in your crystal container. In this game, you have four different symbols on your player card. This is the personal experience, you have the event experience, the innovation experience, and the progress experience. And all of these tokens should be placed on their corresponding track. But every now and then you will also get the one that is called the wild one. This one can be placed on any of the four tracks. And that's the way you draw a card. It's quite simple and you can draw any of the faced up cards. Meaning that you can also draw from the deck itself. And once you have taken your benefits, placed them out in your player area, we need to refill the market. And we always refill from left to right. Meaning that if we would have drawn a card over here, we would have slided the other cards over to the right and then refill the leftmost spot. If you received any scores during your turn, you simply move up that amount on the score track. So that was a player's turn. We took a card, we placed it in front of us, we took the benefits, we refilled the market and if we did get any scores, we moved the little score marker. Now, we have started to build our trek. But what does that actually mean? Well, this is kind of our log of all of the places that we have visited. And this card needs to be placed in chronical order. So if I have visited 41 BCE here, for example, I would need a card further into the future to be able to place that above this one. And that is the way you keep on building your trek. But Every time you cannot choose a card that is further into the future, you need to put this trek to the side face down. Because now this trek is over, you cannot keep on going in chronicle order and you cannot keep on refilling this trek. It is a good thing that you try to build your trek as long as you can because this will affect your scores in the future. Because depending on how long a trek you will get, you will get different scores. If you have less cards in one trek, you will of course get less score for that trek. If you have more cards in that trek, well you will get more scores. Now, on rare occasions, you can actually choose to take an ancestry card instead. And as you can see on these cards, they have a question mark meaning that they can actually go into a trek anywhere and fill up a spot if you have a hard time moving forward in your trek. This is a way for you to help you maybe get out of a sticky icky situation because you never know what's gonna pop up here. And this is why it's really really smart if you start with an early age when you start to build your trek. I mean, you need to keep an eye on your little board here on what benefits you need to get the scores as well, but you also want your trek to move on. When you need to move on the watch, you can actually spend crystals, which I called gems before, to move one step less. Meaning that if I would have needed to move three steps on this watch, I could spend one crystal to only move two steps instead. You always need to move at least one step on the watch, so you can't go all crazy and spend all of your crystal to just stand still. No, time is moving forward, but you can slow it down a bit. However, there is no limit on how many crystals you can have in your container. When all of the players reaches 12 o'clock, this day, or the round, is over. All players must stop at 12 o'clock even though they have more moves left to do. If a player managed to land on 12 o'clock by using the exact amount of time to get there and not more, they also get a score bonus. Because they are on time. So now all players have reached 12 o'clock on the watch and this day is over. Meaning that we need to discard day one. And now we need to refill our little departure track here with day two instead. We do this the same way, first we shuffle the cards, we put them face up and then we draw 
five cards to fill the new departure road. We still keep our crystals that we have earned and the track that we are building keeps on going for as long as we can keep on building it in chronicle order. Now the players need to choose a new initiary that they want to use during the next day, meaning that the one they have here is now discarded and we choose a new one. And now we're ready to go again. We have refilled the departure area, we got some new initiaries, we still have our tracks that we can keep on building, and now we start again at 12 o'clock on the big watch. The players take turns again, depending on who is way back or on top on the watch, and that's the way the game goes on, until we have played through day 3. When day 3 ends and we're all on 12 o'clock again, the game is over and it's time for us to see who actually won. First we need to look at the score track and take that amount that we have our token on. We get one point per crystal that we still have left. And then we need to look at the track track here to see how many points we get for the different tracks that we have. If we have a track with only one card, that is minus three. But if we have a track with two cards, we get zero. If we have tracks with three cards, we get two points, four cards, four points, and so on. Tracks with more cards than ten cards, each additional card will earn three points. Meaning that ten cards will give you 30, and every card above 10 will give you plus 3. And that is how you play Trekking Through History from Underdog Games. This game is not that hard to learn, and pretty much any player, new or old, can sit down and learn this game within minutes and start playing. You can play several games a night because the game moves quite fast, the turns are just flowing over, and the different rounds here or the days does not take that long time to move and play through. There's also something called time warps in this game. I have not used these cards yet because you should play through the base game first before you start taking a look at these. But basically what these are, are cards that will give the different players benefits during their turn. So instead of taking one of the cards out on the track or an ancestry card, you can choose to take a time warp card instead to use in future turns. The artwork on the cards in this game is really colorful, really light. It's quite cool to sit down and watch the different historic events that happens here. And it's fun for all players to read the little details on each card. Because that is a funny little detail. All of these cards have text on the back of them. And on the back you can read about the different historic events that you are traveling through. Which I think is a quite cool little detail. The quality of this game is quite, quite good. I mean, you have the plastic little tokens here, the little watches, but you also have the wooden tokens out on the board. You even have this little fabric player mat here. The cards have a really nice feeling to them. Also, these plastic tokens here. I mean, they could have just made a normal cardboard tokens. Nobody would have said anything because this game is not that expensive, but you get premium cards, premium tokens, really nice little player mat here, even this cool little watch here. I just, I really like the way that they have put this game together and really just made that extra effort for the players. If you have seen any of my videos before, you would know that I am a fan of a good insert and they have really gotten all the way out here. I mean, they got into game trays and made a really good insert for this game. All the little tokens have their compartments, the, the cards as well have their placements, you have the little player mat up here. It is just really really well made and helps you a lot with the setup. The setup is quite easy, it takes no time at all, but this makes it go even faster. The rulebook in this game is quite easy to learn and quite easy to read. There's not that much text in here, there is a lot of pictures, and you can read through this in about 5 minutes and you will have a good understanding of the game. So basically you did not need to watch this video at all. There you have it my friend, that was trekking through history for you from Underdog Games. An easy to learn, lightweight game with still a few strategic elements there where you need to choose how you want to move forward to get the best points. There are a whole series of these games here, I thought that this game was 
quite fun to learn, quite fun to play. It's an easy setup and it's a nice little family game that you can take up, play a few rounds, have a good time, take it down in no time and just have a good little time with it. If you want to know more about this game, there will be links down in the description, so be sure to check that out. And that was the video for this week, my friend. If you like this channel, why not subscribe to it? It gives me a smile on my lips every time I get a new subscriber. Or comment in the video. Have you played any other underdog games before? Have you tried any of the other from these series? I would like to know what do you think about them. I have not tried them myself, so I would like to hear your opinion on what do you think about these games. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And most importantly, until next time, my friend, please keep on spreading that board gaming love I know you all have. Peace.